On Monday, June 30th, 2003, the Solid Axle Corvette Club reenacted the beginning of Corvette production, exactly 50 years earlier in a converted GM truck factory now demolished in the once thriving city of Flint, Michigan. Once it got hooked up with a 283 fueling engine, the Corvette was the car you wanted to race in SCCA's big board production car class. You said that music thumping to you, it's easy. When you go one, two, three, did a bop, bop, bop. You mean bop, bop, bop. The legend has it that Jerry Earl, the son of Harley Earl, GM's powerful top stylist, wanted a classy sports car to take to college. In a few years, Jerry's car would look something like this. But at the time, GM had nothing to offer. So Harley Earl had one of his designers measure up the two-seater Jaguar XK120 and create a concept car for GM's Motorama show. Making its first appearance on January 16, 1953 at the Waldorf Astoria, this novel car, designated EX122, was a big hit and was rushed into production. The car was named the Corvette and appeared in Chevy dealer showrooms that summer. The public had never seen anything like the Corvette's sleek, white, streamlined body that was shaped not from steel, but molded fiberglass reinforced plastic. But when all the cheering ended, it was clear that GM didn't get things right. As 1955 arrived, Ford was booking five times more orders for its new two-seat Thunderbird. By contrast, the underpowered, unrefined, badly marketed Corvette was literally being given away. Zora Arkas Duntov was an engineer with a background in European sports car racing who had talked his way into a job at Chevrolet. He argued that more performance and a competition image were needed if the Corvette was to succeed in the marketplace. Fortunately, Chevy had a new V8 engine on hand to replace the Blue Flame 6. It was coincidental because GM and Ed Cole, president of Chevrolet, feared great embarrassment if they killed the Corvette, admitting defeat to Ford. Facing possible failure at Sebring in their first race in March 1956, GM entered a team of Corvettes undercover. The official race program listed Raceway Enterprises from Dundee, Illinois. The Corvettes found themselves in their own special class, so all they had to do to win was finish. The number one car, nursed by drivers John Fitch and Walt Hanskin, made it to the end of the 12 hours. That summer, Dick Thompson was sent out to battle in SCCA's C production class. Many lessons were learned, starting at Pebble Beach in California. When the points were tallied up at the end of the season, they had won a championship. 